Hey everyone, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're going to be running some 1 16th diameter flux core wire and we're going to run some self-shielded. So we had some questions in the previous video. Uh, there were some people asking, you know, the, uh, the type of polarity that you use. Is all flux core self-shielded ran on DC negative? And the answer is no. So there's actually a designator at the end of your flux core wire and it's a T designator. And if you have uh, T3, T4, and T6, those are all DC positive. So make sure whatever wire you're gonna be using, check the spec sheet to make sure you have the polarity correct and the right application. Case in point, today we're gonna to be using some Select 78, and that is a T8 wire, so it's good for seismic applications, thicker materials, um, whereas the T11 that we used in the previous video is good for material 3 eighths or less. So today, since we're running some, we're gonna run some 3 quarter inch plate, we're gonna run that in the 3F position, meaning it is vertical, and we're gonna be running a, a fillet weld. So we have a T-joint set up. We'll go ahead and show you that here in a minute. Uh, but I just wanna show you the difference between the 045 diameter wire that we typically run and the 1 16th diameter that we're gonna to run today. All right, so the wire on your left is the 045 diameter that we typically run in the shop. And the one on your right hand side is the 1 16th that we're gonna be running today. We've gotten a lot of questions about this wire. Uh, everybody says they wanna break out the big boy wire. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. When we're dealing with different types of wires, be it flux core, metal core, or even solid wire, a good rule of thumb is the weld should be about five to six times the diameter of the electrode. So today, since we're running the 1 16th wire, five to six times, the math is really simple on this. I'm gonna run it to about 5 16 to about 3 8 wide on my weld. So that's, that's just like a little good tip. You know, same thing with 035, you're gonna run it five to six times the diameter, so you can cut couple pieces out as an instructor I used to do this with my students and just kind of give them a visual representation of what that exactly looks like. Let's go ahead and set up the machine. Okay so I pulled up the spec sheet on this specific wire. It's good for shipbuilding, offshore rigs, and it's a seismic wire. So anything that's cyclically loaded structure, so like bridges, uh, you know, buildings. Uh, it's used a lot here down in Florida for the at the Cape. They use that for the launch pad. Anything that's going to have a, a constant load that's going on and off. Uh, so we're gonna, it tells us to run up about 170 inches a minute and 18 to 19 volts. I just ran a couple of test pieces and found out that 185 inches a minute and 19 volts is pretty good and it's running really well for me. Uh, you also wanna make sure that you have the correct drive rolls in there. So I have the 1 16th neural drive rolls set up on the, uh, the inside of the wire feeder. So other than that, I think we're ready to get started. Okay, so as you can see, I don't have a nozzle on here and that's because I want you to be able to see the exact stick out that I'm gonna be using. So it's recommended three quarter to one inch. We talked about it in the previous video. I wanna give that wire time to preheat so that the flux on the inside, the powdered granulated flux can do its thing as I go through here. So that, that distance is, is gonna allow me to preheat that flux so it's ready right when it goes into the puddle. Now this wire is recommended for outside. Uh, since we're welding inside, if you have to use this stuff, I highly recommend good fume extraction. So I actually have two fume extractors here that we're gonna be using to catch all this smoke. Another thing to note is you don't want to stand over top of it and draw that fume over your face or your welding hood so it goes up in the extractors. You want to stay out of the way a little bit. Uh, you always want to try to pull the smoke away from you versus uh, past your face, right? You don't, want to have to, you don't want the smoke to have to go past your face before it gets sucked up into the fume extraction. Uh, common sense, yes, I know, but some people are new to welding, so it's just a, a helpful little tip. You know, keep your head out of the fume plume, right? Some, uh, potentially nasty stuff. You don't want to breathe this in. So let's talk technique for a minute. My work angle is going to be roughly 45 degrees. In other words, dead center between these, these two plates here. I want, to, I want to put that weld so that I get 50% of the weld on each part. As I go up, I'm going to do a slight side to side. Remember, I'm trying to hit that 3 8 wide mark. I'm probably going to go over just a little bit, but you, in, in addition to all that, you want to stay in the center of your puddle. Don't get ahead of your puddle. Stay right in that puddle and just kind of pull it up. Now this is a globular transfer, so there's gonna be some spatter associated with it, and it's a slow moving puddle. This is not a fast process. It's very slow, kind of methodical. You got some time to sit back and you know just think about life. Uh, it's gonna give you a lot of time under the hood to talk to yourself. A lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run up this entire tire weldment. Now you'll notice, uh, depending on which angle the, uh, the camera guy gets here, as my forearm moves up, my wrist is going to move forward to maintain that 15 to 20 degree downward drag angle. So I'm actually going to be dragging this puddle up as I go and I'm going to have to compensate with the, uh, the forearm and the wrist. So as forearm goes up, 
the wrist is going to tilt forward to maintain that angle. All right, so as you can see, I'm going through here just ever so slightly. Like I said, it is a slow process. Uh, we're, not, we're not winning any races here. I'm just doing a little bit of side-to-side -side oscillation, trying to catch that 5 16 to 3 8 bead profile. And I'm just going to continue this all the way up. The more steady you can be, the, uh, the better your weld's going to turn out. Always be comfortable, right? And then just watch your angle. That's the biggest thing in contact tip to work distance. So as you're going through, it's, it's natural to try and get closer. That's what a lot of people do. Try to maintain that three quarter to one inch stick out. That's, that's a big component of this. As well as maintaining that 10 to 15 degree travel angle pointing, pointing back down towards the weld. Okay, again, stay in the center of that puddle and just work, work the weld side to side. Showing. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of the slag here and check that weld out. Get a wire brush. Got one of these furred triangle tips now available on Amazon. Just go through here, get rid of any, any of that, that dust, that powder, any slag that's sticking in there. And then we're just going to do a little weld inspection. Make sure I have proper fusion and I don't have any, uh, any porosity. All right, so as you can see in this area here, I do have a little bit of inconsistency in that bead profile. So what I'm gonna do, again, slow down just a tad, and I'm gonna hold my sides just a little bit longer. I'm gonna go ahead and put a second pass in here, probably about three quarter of the way up, and then we'll finish that off with a third pass about halfway, that way you can see the structure of all three welds. All right, now as you can see from the last pass, I have this ball on the end. It's gonna be very difficult to get ignited, so I'm not gonna get a good arc start on this. You want to make sure it's really important clip that wire off each time you get done and then i usually set my uh my distance here at three quarters to one inch before i even start welding and then i just try to maintain that the whole way up okay so now we're going to go ahead and do pass number two but what i'm going to do is i'm going to terminate it probably about three quarters of the way up and then pass number three will stop about halfway that way i can show you the three bead profile and exactly where they're interacting with one another the next pass I just want to run, I'm going to keep this about the center of my weld, put 50% on the left, 50% on the right hand side, and just do a, a even coverage over that. Alright, so you notice as I go through here, I'm doing about a two second pause on each side. So two seconds on the left, two seconds on the right, and I'm just slowly pulling that puddle up with me. Like I said before, it's a slow process, we're not going anywhere fast, so just take your time, go nice and easy with it. All right, so you'll notice with this type of welding, with this specific type of wire, like your T6s and T8s, it's got like a more glossy appearance. You don't have the typical ripples like you do with a 7018 or some of the other self-shielded flux core wires, or even uh, regular solid wire gas metal uh, arc welding for that matter. It's just got, kind of looks like a shiny slug that sits in there, but it's a very strong weld meant for seismic applications. Let's go ahead and we'll hit pass number three. This type of wire is uh, often found as D18 is the uh, the code that this typically falls under. However, I'd, I'd have to double check, but I think it would also fall under D15, which is the structural steel bridge code, because that's also a cyclically loaded structure. Um, I definitely want to do some more research. If you guys know anything more about that, if you use this in bridge applications, D15, go ahead and post something down in the comments. Uh, I'd be interested to learn more about this wire. Last time I ran this stuff was about 2010 when I was with the, uh, the Iron Workers Union. It's really cool wire. The puddle's a little bit thicker just because the slag is a little bit thicker, uh, which makes it really great for going out of position. So all your verticals, horizontal uh, groove welds, and then overhead and such. So appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you're able to learn something. Um, go ahead, leave us any comments, questions in below. We'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And until next time, make every well better than your last.